and let's play okay so uh this is going to be a video for programming the emv1061 uh, uh, this will be using microvision uh, move this so we're going to use uh, microvision heal uh, ide and on this first video we're going to go through the entire configuration from scratch and then uh, we'll do uh, the the other stuff right so uh, the other stuff meaning that we'll make it discoverable and we'll add some services and characteristics so in this instance we're just gonna uh, we're simply gonna have uh, the whole clock configuration and also the LED blinking and that's about it so let's get started so the first thing we want to do is uh, create a folder for our project so you can see that in my uh, projects file I have the library as well and uh, so let's create a folder for this project and we'll call it uh, EMB1061-1 Okay, so that will be the project folder and inside this project folder we are going to create an include file for INC that is about it well, we'll copy this path go to projects new microvision project and um, oh it's already there right so We'll name it the same, EMB1016 or 61-1. And it's going to create a project file. Save it. Uh, select the device itself. Click OK. Nothing to do on this window. Click OK. And now we just need to set up the folder structure here and you can do it through here but we're gonna do it through this utility uh, so first thing let's rename this to release and a few groups get another one and our user file, uh, group and now let's add the files required for each of those now a lot of the files that we're going to add here are not required right now but will be required for later videos so we'll go to the library and select the one too far the source files and for this file, we're going to use clock context. Uh, this one, miscellaneous utility, OSAL, uh, and sleep. I can close it. Now we have them here. We'll do the same for this. Different files, though. Uh, this, those will be under peripheral driver source. And we're just going to add some of these files, almost all of them actually. Okay. And for the stack, <coughs> we'll need two types of files. Source, yeah. Stack user config. Add that file. I think I added it twice. Yeah, we'll kind of remove it. And we also need to add uh, that A files. And those are under. Uh, here should be one. And the other one. This one. Close it. Let's move this. Uh, for startup, uh, what do we need? What do we need? Let's 
it's a lot of clipping so uh, just bear with me it's, the configuration is quite long but you only have to do it once source system and that is it i think we'll add the files here a different way so that's it for those <clears throat> uh, first thing you want to do is you want to uh, change the file type on this ones uh, because they are mistyped so those are library files this one too okay we will create uh, a file here for our main function Also need to configure this thing um, there are quite a bit of things that we need to configure here so the first thing is we need to change the compiler to version 5 um, it, if you don't have version 5 you will have to go and download it uh, the links will be in the description where you can download it you also need to update the the driver for ST link if you're using ST link I'll leave the the link on the description as well where you can go get it and um, you will have to go to the um, the microvision installation folder under ARM under ARM and ST link and change the USB driver and I'll show you where that is as well. So let's go back to where we were. So that's the version we want. Nothing changes here. Uh, the next change will be let's change this to a hex file. Uh, here we are going to do a few changes. So the first one is uh, uh, the optimization level two. We don't want warnings. Remove this at that one, and we want to add a few includes here. So the first one is going to be our local include. It doesn't have any files yet, but we will add some. So that's the first one. This is the second one. Includes. And one peripherals as well. Now, I'm under the assumption that if you're watching this, you already have the library downloaded. If you don't have it, the link will be in the description as well. I have it on my project file, so I can just go to it uh, and link to the proper files or the proper directories. So, next one. That one. Gross. Oh no. Uh, all right, there it goes. It's currently unavailable. There it is. All right, so we want this and this. Next one. There's a lot of clicking. Okay. And <clears throat> one last one. And 
Hey ladies. Alright, so that should do it. So that's the end for this. We also need to change this as well. We'll come back and set it. Uh, right now, I want to go here on the assembler and we want to add this uh, dash dash C P R O P R O C. That is required. And uh, we are going to change this. We're going to create our own scatter file, but right now we're going to leave it like that. So we compile, creates it for us, and then we'll just go and get one from the example projects and uh, uh, populate it with it. So we'll go to the bug, the, the SD link, which is the one I'm using. Go to settings, make some uh, options here for downloading. A little trace. I want to do 16 megahertz. Uh, flash download, I'll change this to reset and run, erase, that's fine. Uh, here, I'll change this to with preset, so I'll click OK, I'll click OK here as well. And now that I have this, I'm going to compile once, it's going to give me some errors. Maximize this. So I got three errors, uh, but so the thing I want to do is I want to go to a sample project that I have here and get the scatter file from here. Uh, and I got this file from from one of the I think it was the the chat project and this guy right here. So I just want to get that copy the contents of it. Copy, I'll close it, go back to my project, go to my options for project uh, under the linker, remove this, drag the file, click OK so it closes that and I can just select that, paste it, and that will get rid of that one. Uh, let's see if I'm missing anything here. So we are going to do that part. And I have that preset, and I. Uh, this is probably why some people are not able to get it to run, and I'll explain in the, in a second why. Let me just copy the options, and then we'll see those options. So let me just paste them there. I have them ready to go, so I'll just click OK, and I'll come back here, paste them here, and then we'll show. We'll go through each of the options. So that's one, two, and three. So the examples, uh, the reason they don't work is because it, they have a different setting here. It's for an external 32 megahertz uh, um, crystal, and that's for their development board. It has that crystal. The EMB1061 doesn't have it. Also, the inductor for the SD uh, microelectronics development board, it has a 10 microhenry inductor. This one does it, it has a 4.7. So you need to have these two options to make it work. And obviously, you specify the type of device. <coughs> and then the speed, 60 megahertz, because it comes with a 60 megahertz crystal. And that will make it work. So this is the key to making it work. All right, so let's see. We should get some errors here. All right, so the first one is this configuration file. It says it doesn't exist. So this this function here, or this file is calling it, and it doesn't exist. So we need to create that file and populate it. And what that file has, let me look at my notes. Mm -hmm. oh, maybe I don't have it. Let me see. Yeah, we do have it. All right, so let's create the file. And so this is the file. We'll save it. And it's going to be on our local include. That's the file name. 
and this file is a header file, so we need to put a, uh, a definition. So it will be blue NRG1 uh, config h. We'll define it. And if and what this one needs is it just needs the declaration. The um, the include files for this guy's right here. So let's add those. Include blue energy one. And let's copy this part because we're gonna keep repeating it. And first is flash that h. So is the header file for each of these files here. Uh, GPIO I square C and T PKA oh, come on. What else? RTC, SPI, six control, UAR, and WBGH, and the last one, miscellaneous. Okay. We also so that should give us less errors when we compile. So. Should be getting uh, this one is incorrect, so it's it's a typo. I typed it wrong. It's not a typo. I just typed it. Where is it? Somewhere right here. It's, it's E. All right. So compile linking. No errors. No warnings. Uh, so now we should be able to, well, we need two things for this thing to work. Uh, so one is we need to put an interrupt handler uh, for for uh, BLE, the system clock, and if there's a failure. So those three are required. So the first one, we need to add a file. And we'll call this blue energy one IT or interrupt and we'll also create a file with the same name here so this will be blue and RG1 IT.h if not defined G one IT that H and we'll define it and F and uh, what this one needs is it just needs to these are the functional headers uh, for that are here the interrupts. So we'll just copy those right here and bring them over. Remove this part. So control H. Don't put anything here. Replace it. Say OK. Same here. Control H. The semicolon. Replace all of them. OK, close it, and now we have that. So it also needs a couple of headers. So include uh, blue energy x device that h, and include clock that h. I believe that's it. Okay, so we'll take this one's here. And go back to 
the C file will include blue energy one like the that H and we'll also include one big H which is the one that has the additional headers or additional includes and include the stack as well Do energy one stack that H and the clock include blue energy oh just clock okay we'll paste this here Remove the ones we don't need, which is this and that. And on this one, we just need a loop. So if there's a failure, we just want it to land here and not, not go anywhere. Okay. And on this one, uh, that one, syscomp handler. And then the last one will be the RAI ISR. So that should do it. Let's compile again. I had no errors. So now let's add some code to see if we can blink the LED. So here we'll need to add a few more things so the first thing is <clears throat> uh, include the clock uh, make it bigger clock and then the energy one config that H and then include blue energy one it that h this one has a typo and we're gonna I need the gpio so include blue energy one gpio that h okay energy Okay, so void image GPIO as the function. Okay. Void image GPIO. So GPIO. in it and then we'll set first the pin we're gonna be setting um, pin number three so GPIO pin number three and the mode be GPIO GPIO oh. Oh my goodness, what is going on? GPIO, <laughs> GPIO, ah, output, init, enable, init, pull, enable okay we have to enable the clock for the gpio so we'll say system control and, and we want the clock peripheral gpio um, 
look at this. That one. Enable it. GPIO in it. And this will be the init. Okay, so this should allow us to blink an LED. So now all we have to do is uh, uh, sys in it, and then the clock in it, and the in it GPIO, and inside the loop we can put a wait statement or clock wait for one second and GPIO toggle bits of GPIO pin 3 alright let's compile see if it works I have one error so this is misspelled blue and RG or NRG. Let's compile again. One error. Let's spell on enable. Compile again. No errors. Let's see if we can uh, blink the LED so when we load it. So I'll go and load it. Right, so there's your LED. So now the um, let me show you when this loads. before I do that so let me show you here so if you go to this project uh, this one folders extended so when you first install microvision uh, Kyle you are not gonna have compiler 5 because 6 is out now so when you install it when you add it um, When you download it, it's going to go into, let's see, is it microvision? Uh, you, nope. Microvision is not. I think it's under C. Yeah, so right here. So, two things that you need to do is, one is you need to install the compiler, so you're, you're going to download compiler 5, the link will be in the description, you add it to this folder, ARM, name it to something descriptive, so you know where it is, once you have that, you can come here and add it, and then you'll be fine. So. The way you add is you go here, and right, then you just go add another, go find it, select the folder, and then just say, okay, obviously I already have it, so it's going to say it's already in the list, but that's all you have to do, and then you'll be good to go. So that's one. The other one is uh, you need to update, if you're using ST link, you will need to update the uh, the DLL, this DLL, with the one from from SD.com, and I'll post the list in the description where you can go and download the utility, and then you can go into the installation folder and copy the DLL, replace it here. Otherwise, when you try to load it, when you press this one here, the program is going to crash because of this DLL not compatible with the with the SD links out there. So uh, I believe that is it. 
uh, on the next video, uh, we're going to walk through the process of creating the configuration file, um, which is done uh, through this, uh, where do go? New energy. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. U N R G Whistler. Where's my Whistler? Right here. So we're gonna go through this uh, the the radio Whistler uh, configuration file where you set all the, your parameters to give you the right data stack and the right initialization. You end up with this file. You save it, add it to your project, and then you can enable Bluetooth and everything else. Uh, we'll, so on the next video we'll do that and we will be able to see the device on the phone itself. So that's it. Enjoy.